surrounds me, the sky which spreads above me, the earth beneath my feet. When I hear music, when I see beauty, when I breathe in the sunlight, I think of you. You are all the women in my life. You are the sister I never had, the mother I have almost forgotten, the wife I have always dreamed of. There isn't a relationship you can name which exists between a man and a woman of which I wouldn't say, let it be you. Oh, let it be you. Okay, that's the second act curtain. I like that tempo, Lester. Keep it that way. Stick a pin in it. Right. Let's take a ten-minute break. Freddie, will you check on Listen to this. Right the rumor there? along Schubert Alley is that Myra Hudson, a San Francisco heiress, who needs another hit the way Rockefeller needs another million, is rumored to have her best play yet in Halfway to Heaven, which Scott Martindale put into rehearsal this week. I wish they'd forget the heiress business. Just give your money to me, dear, and they'll stop bothering you. You want to talk about those second act changes now? I think we ought to talk about this actor first. He's a real find, isn't he? And what a lovely speaking voice. And he sounds romantic enough, just doesn't look romantic. He's an excellent actor, Myra. I know, Bill. But that isn't enough for this role. We've got to convince the audience that this character could recite three blind mice to Laura, and she would think it was the most romantic poem in the world. He has to be the kind of charm boy that, that makes every woman in the audience sit right up and go, hmm, the instant he walks on that stage. I haven't seen an actor like that since John Barrymore. Scott, I've watched him from every section of this theater. And I'm sorry, but he's just not right for the part. Have you decided to set yourself up as a judge as to who is romantic looking, Myra? I have to direct this play. In my opinion, he'd be great for the part. You're both entitled to your opinions, but I still say that he's not my idea of a romantic leading man. Sweetie, I am only putting a paltry $85,000 in this play. I know that's only the interest on your securities, but it happens to be my money. That you made on my play. Well. Well, there's no use in arguing. And I hate to break the news to Blaine. Well, tell him the truth. Make me the heavy. Say I exercise the dramatist's privilege of cast approval. You heard her, Bill. You fire him. Then they wonder why I haven't a friend along Broadway. That's all for today, everybody. Oh, Mr. Blaine, can I see you a moment? Anne. Anything in the morning mail that needs an immediate answer? Telegram from San Francisco from Steve Carney and Charles Hoyt phone about an interview. And the dramatist guild ask if you can attend a committee meeting Saturday evening. Friday at 2 for Mr. Hoyt. Tell the guild I'm in rehearsal, but I'll try. Why, Steve, that the play opens on the 21st and I'll take the train to San Francisco on the following Monday. Miss Hudson! Miss Hudson! In your own native city of San Francisco, there's an art gallery in the Legion of Honor in which there's an oil painting of Casanova. It's quite obvious that you've never seen this painting. For your information, Miss Hudson, this is what Casanova looked like. He had big ears, a scar over one eye, a broken nose, and a wart on his chin. Right here. I suggest, Miss Hudson, that when you return to San Francisco, you visit this gallery and see this painting. Mr. Blaine. Mr. Blaine! It's a through car. I'll be waiting for you at the Oakland Pier, Myra. Thank you, Anne. I'm so tired, I don't want to see or talk to anyone till I get to San Francisco. I'll take a risk here on the train. I'll drive Anne to the airport tonight. Thanks, Bill. I'm like Mara. I'd rather ride the train. Have a wonderful trip. Ford! And if you have any spare time between here and Chicago, write me another play. Oh, sure, sure. I'll have it done by Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.
Coincidence you're getting on the train at Buffalo. Oh, I got on the train in New York, Miss Hudson. As a matter of fact, I saw you embark. You did? I saw the whole procession. Candy, books, flowers. Oh, now look. I, I... thought perhaps you'd come down to say goodbye to me. And then I remembered you'd done that about a month ago. I tried to reach you several times about a month ago. Oh, did you? Yes. Excuse I... me, sir. I'm sorry. Now that you're here, won't you come in for a drink? All right. Shall I ring for the porter? Yes, please. Sit down. What are you reading? Time out for crime. Yes, Miss Hudson. A couple of drinks. Scotch over ice, please. Yes, sir. How did you know? What you drink? Mm -hmm. I read the papers. Well, now that I've finally caught up with you, I'd, I'd like to really explain what really happened. Please don't. Look, Miss Hudson, you wrote an excellent play and cast it according to your best judgment. I read the reviews. They were sensational. My congratulations. It's a little embarrassing coming from you. Oh, forget it. Thanks. Look, let's get down to something far more important. Do you play stud poker? I haven't for years. You mean two-handed stud poker? Yeah. I used to play like that with my father. Oh, we used to fight like mad. Liked your father? I adored him. He was a great poker player. You still willing to take a chance? I'll risk it. All right, come in. Scotch over ice? Oh, would you get us a deck of playing cards, please? Yes, sir. Always carry a deck on me in case a gentleman needs someone to hurt. Oh, hell, thank you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, please, I invited you. I should say not. But I insist. I'll tell you what. Let's play the match game. The what game? The match game. Don't you know it? I'm afraid I never heard of it. All right, I'll teach it to you. Excuse me. Do you have any book matches? Yes, right here. Thank you. Now, this is how the game goes. Here are three matches for you. Let me have your hand. Three for you, mm -hmm. and three for me. Now, put both of your hands behind your back like this. Yes. Now, put any number of matches. Zero, one, two, or three in one hand. Close it into a fist. Got it. And swing it out in front of you like this. Now, you guess how many matches there are in both our hands combined. In both? Yes. Let's see. Um... Come on. Four. Now it's my turn to guess, and I say three. Now turn your hand over like this. Four? I won. Yeah. Are you sure you haven't played this game before? <laughs> oh, no, I'm positive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would you like me to close the door? No, thank you. Yes, sir. And now for a fast game of poker. We'll need some chips. You shuffle the cards, we'll use the matches for chips. It's four for you. For me. For you. And for me. Don't you have one match too many? I'm sorry. Miss Hudson, I'm entitled to a cut. Sorry. Cut. Pittsburgh. My father was a coal miner. I served a stretch underground, too, as a kid. I had to. Since then, I've traveled through Pennsylvania only at night. I don't recognize the country in the daylight. My pop couldn't understand my wanting to breathe fresh air, wear a clean face, read a book now and then. When did you start to act? In the army. Playing Lenny and Mice and Men in a camp show. <laughs> what a wonderful way to fight a war. But it was my downfall, too. Once you've lost your heart to the theater, it's hard to get it back. Besides, I won't take it back. I'm stubborn. I like people who make up their minds and then stick to it, whatever the odds. You're a very good actor, too. You know, it wasn't my lack of faith in your ability as an actor that made Please. me... Please. It's been such a delightful breakfast, Miss Hudson. Let's keep it that way. Shall we play the match game? Certainly not. 
We'll be in Chicago soon. I'm going to show you a part of Chicago you never dreamed existed. Sports, the theater, the Roman arena, all rolled into one. Can we see all of that in four hours? We can see it in five minutes where I'm going to take you. Let's go. Thanks. Miss Hudson, you'll want to put your Chicago lipstick on. I'll wait for you in the lounge car. Fine, I'll meet you there in ten minutes. Right. Conductor. How can I make arrangements to stay on this train straight through to San Francisco? My ticket's only good to Chicago. When I pull into the station, I'll check and see if there's space available on the next Pullman. It connects with the California Zephyr. I'd appreciate that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I always feel that I'm halfway home when the train leaves Chicago. It must give you a warm feeling to have a home to go to. It was such fun in Chicago today. An acting school for wrestlers. <laughs> now I've seen everything. <laughs> it's all part of the theater. That's why I knew you'd be interested. You work pretty hard at the theater, don't you? Yes, I believe I do. Why do you work? Why do I work? Oh, I suppose it's a desire to achieve, to earn my keep, to stand on my own two feet instead of my father's fortune, and to make my own place in the world. Does that make sense to you? Makes a lot of sense. Personal achievement. It's what we all want, each in our own way. Though, to be honest, if I'd inherited all that money, I'm not sure I'd have had the character. Of course you would. Look, a lot of little cells and glands and molecules get together. They spell out Lester Blaine. There's no other person in the whole world who exactly duplicates you. Two billion, one hundred and seventy-four million people. But only one less to blame. I'll travel part of the way with you on that idea. Two billion, one hundred and seventy-four million people in the world. And only one Myra Hudson. Mm. Excuse me. Your table for two in the dining car is ready, Mr. Blaine. Thank you. Shall we, Myra? The skies are painted with a thousand sparks. They are all fire, and every one doth shine. But there's but one in all doth hold his place. Julius Caesar, third act, scene two. Roger. I bet here's one you don't know. Burn this night with torches. I know my heart's I hope well of tomorrow. Anthony. Right. And tomorrow you'll be in San Francisco. Oh, you'll love my San Francisco. Is that a wedding ring? It was my mother's. my lawyer, my guide, and my dearest friend. Mr. Connie. Mr. Blaine, ever been to San Francisco before? Oh, very briefly. I came through with a camp show during the war. Oh, it's going to be such fun showing you San Francisco. Mm. How about dining and dancing tonight? Tonight? Well, aren't you tired from your trip, Mark? Oh, not at all. Why should we pick you up? I'm not sure where I'm going to stay. Well, uh, let's say uh, the Fairmont at 9 o'clock, huh? Well, that'll be fine. Go ahead. Well together, don't they?
welcome to my home, Lester. Thank you. It's quite a cozy home. Cozy enough for you to take your coat off. I'm delighted. It's five o'clock already, and I'm not the least bit sleepy. Is it that late? It has been fun tonight, hasn't it? It's still fun this morning. This is where I work. Where your plays are born. <laughs> plays are born out of everything you've ever seen and all the men and women you've ever known. This is where I put them on paper. Would you like a drink? Yes. Scotch, orange juice, milk? Whatever you drink. Milk, then. What's this? A guided missile? No, that's my dictating machine. I've never seen one like it before. I had it built specially. I like to wander around when I dictate. I'll show you something. See this? It's a microphone. There are four others hidden around the room. There's the master switch over there. I turn it on. All the microphones are alive automatically. When I start to talk, the disc records. And when I stop, it stops. That's very ingenious. Skull. Skull. Why don't you try it yourself? Come on, walk around the room. Say something. Well? When I wake in the morning, when I go to sleep at night, I think of you. You're like the air which surrounds me, the sky which spreads above me, the earth beneath my feet. When I hear music, when I see beauty, when I breathe in the sunlight, I think of you. You are the sister I never had. The mother I have almost forgotten, the wife I have always dreamed of. There isn't a relationship you can name which exists between a man and a woman of which I wouldn't say, let it be you. Or let it be you. It's very flattering to be quoted. I'll play it back for you. Well? When I wake in the morning, when I go to sleep at night, I think of you. You're like the air which surrounds me, the sky which spreads above me, the earth beneath my feet. When I hear music, when I see beauty, when I breathe in the sunlight, I think of you. You are the sister I never had, the mother I have almost forgotten, the wife I have always dreamed of. There isn't a relationship you can name which exists between a man and a woman of which I wouldn't say, let it be you. Or let it be you. It's very flattering to be quoted. Wonderful day. Every minute of it. Dinner's at seven. Don't be late, darling. I'll be ahead of time. Operator. Operator. I've been trying to get Prospect 17171 for two hours. Will you please check and make sure the phone isn't out of order? One moment, please. Thank you.
Myra, we're a delegation of two to see what's happened to our hostess. Myra, you must come downstairs. I'll be there in a minute. You've been trying to teach me manners ever since I was a kid. Everybody's waiting. Shh. Something must have happened to him. Well, maybe the guy got his dates mixed. You know, sometimes... You knew I... I was giving this party just for him. Myra, let me phone, so you can join your guests. Maybe he misunderstood the time. Oh, he'd have called. He calls every night. He wouldn't be two hours late, though, unless something had happened. I must go to him. Could I drive you, Myra? No, thanks, Junior. This is something I have to do all by myself. What will I tell the guests? It doesn't matter. Tell them anything. Just tell them anything. Calling and calling. Why haven't you answered? Forgive me. Where are you going? I have no place in your life, Myra. No proper place. And you were leaving without even a word? I don't belong to your world. You have so much, I have nothing. Without you, I have nothing. Come on, sleepy head. Let's no, get out don't. Of no, don't. Don't do that to me. Where's your bathing suit? Over there in the drawer. Which one is it? That one. Here, come on. Let's take a swim before breakfast. All right. Turn your head away. Go on. Turn your head away. I like to look at you. You couldn't possibly at this hour in the morning. Oh, anybody can look at you in the afternoon. But I haven't even got my lipstick on. A woman has to wear lipstick. I feel positively naked without it. Darling. Let's get out of here before I forget I'm a married man. Do you want this, dear? Yes, please. I'll fix breakfast for us after our swim. Where are the steps of the float? Right here. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! What's the matter, darling? <laughs> It's a precipice. <laughs> I've been running up and down these steps ever since I was 12. Don't you ever do it again. Why not? Remember what Nietzsche said, live dangerously. 
You know what happened to Nietzsche. What? He's dead. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lester Blaine will proceed down this ski jump at a nice slow walk. All right. Watch out! What is it? There isn't even a guardrail. <laughs> but there's no danger, not really. Oh, no? You could get killed falling down these steps. <laughs> what a beautiful place for it. <laughs> You know what we do here in the wintertime? No. We ski. Mrs. Blaine, you're about to be dumped. Oh, no, 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 no! Yes, you are! No, 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 no. Healthy specimen, Myron. <laughs> oh, darling, I'm so happy for you. I hope you play bridge. <laughs> Very badly. Fine, that's what we're looking for. A bad bridge player with good money. Oh, George. <laughs> Just a joke, dear. Good evening, Mr. Connie. Julius. Oh. How have you been, Myron? Fine. We had a divine time at the summer house. Oh, Myra, did my mother come in? Yes, she's with uh, Tom and Francesca. Oh, I see her. Come on, darling, say hello to mother. Yes, George. Excuse me, please. Yes, Doctor. Shut up, Doctor. Myra. Hello, Junior. Congratulations. Thank you. This is Irene Nears from New York, Myra Hudson. No, it's Blaine now, isn't it? Yes, it is. How do you do, Miss Nears? How do you do, Mrs. Blaine? This is my husband, Lester Blaine. How do you do, Mr. Blaine? Miss Nears? Welcome to California, Miss Nears. Thank you. Are you a visitor, or are you going to stay here? Oh, no, I intend to become a San Franciscan. I've taken an apartment at the Tamil Pies. How nice. You'll excuse us, Myra, Lester. Junior, introduce Miss Nees to our guests and give her a drink, will you? Sure. It's very nice to meet you both. Hello, Steve. Hello, Junior. This is Irene Neves, my brother Steve. How do you do, Miss Neves? How about you and I having a drink together? Don't get out. It's too late. Thank you for a lovely evening. I usually take my girls to the front door and kiss them goodnight. You stay right where you are. Good night, dear. Call me tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night, Junior. Good night. Ah! Mom. What are you doing in San Francisco? An old friend of mine married a San Francisco girl. Here, I'll show you. It was in all the New York papers. Good picture, both of them, isn't it? Don't be cute. I thought I'd come out here to see how you were getting along. How long have you been here? A week, and take your hands off me. Where did you meet Carney? At his office. You see, I thought I might need a lawyer. Your wife's lawyer from choice. Steve's my wife's lawyer. Yes, but Junior is more impressionable. What have you said to impress him? You said you were going to Chicago for a job. What have you said to impress him? You mean if I told him why a certain woman lent you 5,000? Have you? Have you? Not yet. And I haven't told him about the house on Fire Island either. For the night after New Year's. If you ever do, you're gonna need a new face. Remember that. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for what? Still loving me. So, Mr. Boulder, I'll call back. And please hold the phone calls for a while, Miss Carter. Yes, Mr. Carney. Now, as I understand it, this all boils down to a matter of dollars and cents. That's right. 
You realize, of course, that your wife is a very wealthy woman. I've never discussed it with her. I see. Before I pursue the matter further, I think I should know just how much money you require. Naturally, I can't pretend to support Myra, but I ought to at least support myself. Oh, certainly, I had no intention of implying that I'm you're... sure of it. You're too good a friend of Myra's, and I hope eventually of mine. Excuse me, Lester. Sure. Yes? Steve, I've just added up Myra's new figure for the Hudson Foundation. Do you realize what percentage of the estate she's giving away? I'll talk to you about it later. You were saying there's very little work for an actor here in San Francisco. Yes. Still, Myra comes first with me, so since her friends and her interests are here, this is where we'll have to live. I'm glad to hear you say that. Now, if you could give me some advice on what kind of employment to look for. I don't like to use my wife's connections, but unfortunately, I don't have any of my own. I see. You realize that with Myra's income as a playwright, there's no real necessity for you to work at all. There's a very real necessity for my going to work, Steve. You see, I'm not the kind of a man who could live on his wife's money. I understand. Say, Steve, before I prepare the conveyance for Here's the Here's a friend of yours. Son. Oh, hello, Lester. Hello, Junior. Good to see you. Thank you. Social visit, or is Carney and Carney about to get a new client? Yes, no, he's purely right social. Here. Telephone for you. A Miss Irene Neves. Oh. Junior. Pardon me, Lester. Sure. Hello, Irene. Dick? You're dead. Yes. I had a wonderful time, too. Why? How about trying it again no, sometime thanks. soon? Tonight? Ah, oh, don't worry. You couldn't get rid of me if you tried. Rendezvous. You're still running after young Carney. What's the idea? You're hurting me. I haven't started to hurt you unless you give me some straight answers. Why are you seeing Carney? Because you haven't called me in eight days. Because the rent's due. And because I'd rather eat dinner than starve. I'll get you some money as soon as I can. I've got to watch my step. And what am I supposed to do while you watch it? Look at the walls and wait for the phone to ring? I'll tell you what you can do. You can help me. Junior likes you. He'd talk easy for somebody he liked. What do you want him to talk about? My wife is giving a lot of money away to a thing called the Hudson Hart Foundation. I want to know who gets how much and who handles the money. Well, why don't you turn over in bed some morning and ask her? Why don't we really start a work together the way we used to? Yeah. Why don't we? You'll see what you can get out of Connie. I'll turn him inside out. last night. You want to know what part of her father's estate she's giving away? All of it. I wish I was kidding, but according to Junior, she's only keeping a little real estate that she bought with her own money and the royalties from her plays. All the rest she's giving to the Hmm Hmm Foundation. Well, that's a fine, noble character you married. Ha! Huh. Why don't you use that key I gave you and come on over? We've got lots to talk about. Yeah. Goodbye. Hi. Hello, darling. Thanks again for a wonderful time last night. Dancing in the middle of the week made me feel like a debutante. You look like a debutante. What have you got there? Just a little private party before the guests arrive. You know you're spoiling me for any other husband. 
I can't think of anything more exciting than drinking champagne in a pretty woman's bedroom. I can't think of anything more exciting than drinking champagne with you. Skull. Skull. I was talking to Steve the other day. He'll be here in a few minutes. Said he was coming early to bring some papers. He mentioned something about a trust fund you were setting up in memory of your father? Mm hmm Heart Foundation. Great idea. Tell me about it someday, will you? I'd love to, darling. You're mussing me. Am I? Who is it? Mr. Carney has arrived to see Mrs. Blaine. You wanted to see me? Yes, Myra, dear. Happy birthday. But that isn't until Monday. Oh, uh, but this coming Monday is the big birthday, as you know. The day you sign the trust agreement over to the Foundation. No, oh, don't tell me I have still more papers to look at. A simultaneous conveyance for Lester to put his name on. You're married now, you know. I know it. And I love it. And while I was about it, I made out a new will for you to sign, because... Because I'm married now, I know. As your friend, as, as well as your attorney, I took the liberty of suggesting what I consider a sensible bequest. My, thank you, Steve. If the terms don't satisfy you, I can change them to anything you like. My husband, on my death, income 10,000 a year for life, or until he remarries. Steve, I wouldn't do a thing like that to someone I loved. Not for all the money in the world. I'm not going to hang on to any man from the grave. I'm astonished at you. Steve, all my life I've been rich. Nobody could give me anything. I had it all. But that wasn't enough. Then I met Lester. He filled my life completely. He gave me everything and took nothing. Only my love. And for the first time in my life, I felt poor. Because that was all I had to give. And for the first time in my life, I, I felt rich. Because he gave me so much in return. Myra, you'd lambaste the daylights out of any playwright who turned out dialogue like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But the happy heart loves the cliché. Yes, I know. Look, let me dictate the changes I'd like in this tomorrow, and you can pick it up with the rest of the papers on Monday, huh? Could you do it now? Junior and I are going to Sacramento tomorrow. Oh, that sounds very gay. Doesn't it? <laughs> We're arguing a case before the state Supreme Court. Well, I guess i better think about it now. To my dear husband. To my beloved husband. What's the matter, Steve? Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd better dictate these changes. Paragraph one. I do hereby give and bequeath to my beloved husband, Lester Blaine, the income from all my play royalties. This income to be his in perpetuity and is not revocable on his remarriage after my death. Or during my lifetime, should our marriage be dissolved, I'm not going to hang on to him from this side of the grave either. Oh, my guests are here. Steve, be an angel and run down and tell them I'll be there in 10 minutes, will you? Certainly. Thanks. Paragraph two. Would you like the very close? Yes, please. Paragraph two. Upon my death, all my real estate and investment holdings are to go to my husband as a small return for the happiness he has given me. Hello, brother. It was so nice thank of thank Mrs. Much. Blaine to ask me here tonight. Have to see you along. I don't see how. It's a pleasure to have you here, Miss Neves. It's very important. 
Myra will be right down, Lester. Thank you, Steve. All right, Myra, study upstairs. I'll tell you when. Thank you. Junior? Yes, Irene. Good evening. Yeah. Turn on the music. I'll bid four spades. Pass. Six hearts. I'll just double six hearts. Redouble. Oh, no. Now we're in for it. Let's take a look at that dummy, partner. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Myra. You slept late after the party last night. Yes, Lester had already gone by the time I woke up. He left a message for you, said he might be late for dinner. Oh? Did you know you left the dictating machine on last night? Oh, no, I didn't. I turned it off. At least I think I did. Well, it was on when I was ready to leave, so I turned it off. Maybe I did leave it on. I was feeling very gay last night. It's good to see you so happy. to my beloved husband, Lester Blaine. The income from all my play royalties. This income to be his in perpetuity and is not revocable on his remarriage after my death. Nor during my lifetime should our marriage be dissolved. I'm not going to hang on to him from this side of the grave either. Oh, my guests are here. Steve, be an angel and run down and tell them I'll be there in ten minutes, will you? Certainly. Thanks. Paragraph two. Would you like the very Yes, please. Paragraph two. Upon my death, all my real estate and investment holdings are to go to my husband. as a small return for the happiness he has given me. Junior's told me something I think you ought to know. She's made a new will. Go on. That's what Steve had to see her about. He's leaving with Junior for Sacramento for three days. When they return on Monday, the will is to be signed. Why the rush? I don't know. How do I stand it? I couldn't find out. If Steve rigged it, I'll be out flat on my face. Why couldn't you find out? What excuse can I give Junior for asking? I take enough chances as it is. This part of the loving bridegroom is beginning to crawl out of my ears. You know the lines. Just keep on saying them and you do it good. Sometimes when I'm with her, it's all I can do to keep from saying, be yourself, wise up. Love you, I never loved you. Never for one moment. <laughs> I'd like to see her face. You're talking crazy. Come here. Take it easy, I've got to go back downstairs. Just once more. Oh, you smeared my lipstick. I've got to fix it before somebody comes. Where's a mirror? Find the desk. Just to hold you like this, it's all I dream about. You don't. I don't know how I stand it not being with you. What's this on the desk? It's the will. Last will and testament of Myra Hudson Blaine. Let's see where I come in. J.V. Hudson Foundation. Oh, that's not it. Here it is. To my husband, Lester Blaine, on my death, $10,000 a year. Is that all? Get a load of this. Until he remarries. And you thought you were playing it so smart. Not taking anything from her. No presents, no jewelry, no handouts, no nothing. Oh, if that dirty double-crossing dame thinks Listen, she can... she can't sign it till Monday. Did Junior say that? Yes. She comes into the rest of her old man's money Monday. She can't dispose of it till it's hers. Well, she doesn't sign the will until Monday, so what's the difference? Suppose she isn't able to sign it on Monday. What do you mean? Suppose something happened to her between now and Monday. Who'd get her money? Her husband, Lester Blaine. I'd get it all. Why not? Sure. Why not? Rich. You and me, rich. Lester. I have a gun. Gun's no good. It'll have to look like an accident. Sure, sure, but... 
But that's easy. Not too easy. We've got three days. I've got to be smart. As her husband, I'd be suspected before she was called. Three days. We'll work it out. Kiss me. Kiss me. Hard. Crazy about you. I could break your bones. No more. We'll have to be careful. You'd better give me the key back. What key? You know what key? The key to my apartment. Uh-uh. I might need it. Don't you dare. With Junior popping in and out, and your wife's house only a few blocks away. That's a break with Steve and Junior being away. I gotta think fast. Gotta think of a nice, foolproof little accident. We'll work something out. I know a way. 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 Take it easy, Lester. I don't know how I can stand it. Not being with you. I'm so crazy about you. I could break your bones. I'll make a pay for this. But it's got to look like an accident. A nice, foolproof little accident. An accident. An accident. An accident. An accident. An accident.
heard a scream. What's the matter, darling? What's the matter? I was asleep. I, I guess I was dreaming. What's wrong, Myra? Anne and the servants haven't seen you all day. I haven't been feeling too well. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it anything serious? Oh, just, just a frightful headache. I've never seen you look like this. I guess maybe I had too much champagne last night. Yeah? You drank a toast with everybody. I'll fix you something for your headache. No. I'm sorry, my nerves are so on edge. I've had an aspirin. I'll be all right if I could just sleep this off. Just as you say, dear. I'll put you to bed, then. Come on. You'll feel better when you get under the covers. Isn't that better? Now I'm going to see that you get a good night's rest. Where are your sleeping pills? Here they are. This will help you to sleep. Here. What's the matter, darling? I'm sure I'll fall asleep without it. I'm very tired. All right. Don't fight it, dear. Take the pill if you can't sleep. Good night, darling. Oh, I'm going to bed early tonight, too, so... Would you like me to leave my door open in case you need me? No, thanks. Better give me the key back. What key? You know what key. The key to my apartment. Uh-uh. I might need it. Master, I have a gun.
Good morning, Mr. Blaine. Good morning, Mrs. Blaine. You're up early. Didn't you sleep? Like a top. The last thing I remember was reaching for the pill, and I was fast asleep. You're feeling much better. Much. Service. I'm feeling a little apologetic this morning. What about? Yesterday. I'm afraid I was pretty bad-tempered. You weren't much like yourself. I've just been working too hard lately, trying to get my new play started. I'm sorry, Lester. I think it might be a good idea to get away for a few days. Rest up. Maybe I could bring that nice-tempered Mrs. Blaine back. Go away? Where will you go? Oh, just down to the summer house. This time of year? I know it sounds crazy, but I love it down by the bay in the winter. It's so quiet. I can take walks along the waterfront. Sounds pretty dreary. It's wonderful. It's like being on a desert island. Aren't any of the houses open? Nothing near. All the houses along the waterfront are closed for the season. I'll only have seagulls for company, like a Russian novel. It's very restful being alone, away from everybody. You don't mind my tidying up after you, do you? I don't mind anything about you, except you're going away. OK. If that's what you want, that's what we'll do. Oh, but I wouldn't expect you to come. Of course I'll come. No, oh, really, there's no reason for you to be bored just because I need a rest. Now, get this straight, darling. I wouldn't let you go down there by yourself. Let's not argue about it. I'll confess something. I was hoping you'd ask to come. Then it's all settled? If you're sure you don't mind. Mind when it's for you? We'll have a second honeymoon. No servants, no visitors, just the two of us. Sounds wonderful. It'll be wonderful. I'll start to pack right away. Wait. It's too soon to pack, isn't it, since we're not leaving until Sunday? Sunday? But I thought... I would if I could, but I can't get away any earlier, dear. Oh, Lester, would you do me a favor? Of course, dear. Would you drive down and air out the house this afternoon and build a fire to get rid of the dampness? I'll be glad to. Good. I'll see you at dinner, then. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to kiss me? Why do you look at me like that? I was just wondering what I'd done to deserve you. Did you know that Myra asked me to lunch with her today? What did you tell her? That I had a date with a very exciting man. You don't suppose she could suspect anything, do you? Not the way I make love to her. But Sunday's cutting it awfully thin, isn't it? Sure. This place is so perfect for an accident. Down those stairs. And it was her own idea to come here. Yes. Now, look, the first thing you do tomorrow morning is to call up your theater ticket agency. Get two seats for a couple of shows next week. Who for? We can't... For her. You better make it four seats and ask Junior and me. I'll get Junior to plan dinner first or a supper party afterwards. And then we'll all be broken-hearted together.
Good morning. Ready? Ready? For what? To go to the summer house the way you planned. You're not dressed yet. But I told you. Oh, I am sorry. It must have been Anne I told. Told what? About the Rolstons. You see, yesterday was her birthday and tomorrow's mine. And every year she gives this birthday party. The day in between, I'd completely forgotten about it. What are you saying? That we're not going to the summer house. We're going to the Ralstons instead. But you promised. I know. But I promised Eve first a long time ago. Listen, you said we were going to the summer house. You can't back out now. Lester, why are you so excited? Well, I guess I was just disappointed. I mean, I've been looking forward to being alone with you. Another honeymoon. We can still have it next week. <laughs> 
But you need a rest now. Why give it up for a dinner party? Oh, I'm feeling much better now. And besides, Steve and Junior will be back from Sacramento. I thought they weren't due until Monday. At the office. They'll be home tonight. She's asked them, too. Dinner and bridge. Dinner and bridge. You might have told me sooner. Is it so important? No. Oh. I... I broke a golf date this afternoon. But you can still go out. It's early. Don't be cross. Oh, I'm not cross. It's sweet of you to be disappointed. Go to the club and see if I can get a game. Oh, don't be late. I've asked Steve, Irene, and Junior for cocktails so we can all go on to Eve's together. All right. Chances of lose everything. It's got to be an accident, a quick accident. What kind of an accident? What kind? What kind? Oh, keep your voice down. What kind of an accident? Lester. Yeah. Do you remember that woman who tried to kill herself on Far Island? So? I took it away from her. Remember? Took what? What she tried to kill herself with. Well, what good does that do us? I've got it. I saved it. I'll show you. Yeah. Refills, everybody? Yes, sir. Always rum for one more. Oh, <laughs> Junior, please. <laughs> Irene, I'm sorry I didn't know you were going to wear white tonight. If it's going to be embarrassing for you, I can run upstairs and change in a second. Oh, no. You look so lovely, Myra. Thank you. Ah, there's a wonderful martini. Thank you. The servants are off tonight. Excuse me while I get the hors d'oeuvre. Why don't we just stay here tonight? This is more fun than playing bridge. Bridge is a wonderful game. Occupies the mind, keeps you away from bad company, and uh, yields a small but steady income. Well, if I must play bridge, I hope Myra's my partner. Okay, partner? Myra's mind is someplace else tonight. Come to the party, dear. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hate to break this up, but we're due at the Ralston's. I'll get my coat right away.
fair go tonight at the Ralston's, Junior and I made seven spades doubled and redoubled. Ready, everybody? I wasn't looking. Fire! Fire! Are you all right? Oh, I think so. Go oh, get some water, somebody. Sure. How did it happen? Oh, I tripped over my coat. You're pale as a ghost. Oh, I'm still alive. Sit on this chair here. Oh, my ankle. Oh, which one is it? Let's have a look at it. This one. Careful. Let's take the shoe off. Hey, that, that looks pretty bad. We better call a doctor. Oh, no. No, no, it isn't that serious. If it isn't better by tomorrow, I'll have it x-rayed. Here, drink this. Here, darling. Thank you. Try to stand on it. That's the best thing. No, I don't think you should. Exercise is good for it. Is it? Keeps the circulation going. All right, Irene. I'll try it. Yes. Lester, will you help me? Sure. No. No, it's no use. I think you ought to get her out to bed, Myra. Yes, perhaps you're right. Maybe if you rested a while. Oh, no, I'm afraid not. I don't suppose there's any use asking you to go on without me. Not a husband like yours. I certainly wouldn't leave you alone. You'll have to go by yourselves. Tell even George how sorry we are. Oh, all right. I'll get your coat, Irene. The faster we get out of here, the sooner she'll get to bed. I'm sorry, Myra. I feel such a fool falling down the steps. So clumsy of her. If you insist on being your own doctor, remember, it's ice packs for a sprain, not a hot water bottle. I know. Thank you, Steve. I'll take good care of Myra. Of course you will, Lester. I'll just put on my scarf. There's a mirror. Excuse me. I hope I haven't broken up your game tonight. Forget it. Just take care of your ankle. No, I will. Thank you, Junior. So we play cut in. But I still think you ought to call the doctor. Please tell Eve how sorry I am. I know she'll understand. She'll understand, dear. Of course she will. I'll call after dinner to see how you feel. Yes, Steve. Good night. Good night. I do hope you feel better soon, Myra. Thank you, Irene. Please let yourselves out. I want to take Myra upstairs. Goodbye. Good night, Lester. Myra. Let's go here. I'm sorry to spoil your evening. But you don't like bridge anyway. Would you get me a nice bag? And a cigarette, please. I'll see if there's an ice bag in the bathroom. Back here, I'll have to go downstairs for one. And will you bring my coat? It's still on the stairs. Right. Ice bag, coat, and I'll pick up your shoe, too. Oh, and maybe a book. Would you like me to read to you after a while? Yes. I'd like that. I'd like that very much. The 
let mystery have its place in you. Do not be always turning up your whole soil with the plowshare of self-examination. But leave a little fallow corner in your heart ready for any seed the winds may bring. And reserve a nook of shadow for the passing bird. Keep a place in your heart for the unexpected guest. An altar for the unknown god. Then if a bird sing among your branches, do not be too eager to tame it. If you are conscious of something new, thought or feeling wakening in the depths of your being, do not be in a hurry to let in light upon it, to look at it. Let the springing germ have the protection of being forgotten. Hedge it around with quiet. And do not break in upon its darkness. Let it take shape. happiness to anyone. Darling, are you asleep? Are you asleep?
have been found guilty of murder in the first degree, and for the killing of Lester Blaine, you will be sentenced to death. Well, hello. Let me go. How about buying you a little drink? Let me go, please. Oh, come on, sir. I said let me go. Dames. Junior, it's nice of you to bring me home from the party so early, when you were having such a good time. Please, Junior, I have a headache. I'm going to take an aspirin and go to bed. 
I've run into some stiff competition in my time. It's the first time I ever tangled with an aspirin. Junior, I told you why I came home early. I know it's awfully good for a headache. Why don't you just relax and let yourself go? Not tonight, Junior, please. Don't send me away, not now. I don't want to, you know that. But this headache, that's why I left the party early. You're much too beautiful to have a headache. Oh, you needn't crush me to death. I'm sorry, it's just... Well, I've been driving myself crazy imagining things. Imagining maybe there's someone else. When do you give me a chance? If there were, I'd kill him. You wouldn't kill anyone. Why not? You're not the type. There now. Satisfied? The answer is no. But I'll go. Just one more? Good night, Junior. All right, but take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow.
Irene, are you all right? Answer me, Irene. Irene. Irene! 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 Open the door!
Thank mm -hmm. you. 